Hello students. So after understanding the convolution theorem, now let's start with the numerical which is based on convolution theorem. So here I'm going to give you a function of s and we are going to find out the inverse Laplace transform for that by using convolution theorem. So let's start. So here we have to find out inverse Laplace transform of s square upon s square plus a square the whole square. Now guys to find out the inverse Laplace transform of this function let's assume that we have to use the convolution theorem. So let me tell you that the inverse Laplace transform of this method can be found out by other methods as well. But here since we are taking this numerical for convolution theorem I am gonna find out the answer of this given function by using convolution theorem only. Now guys what is the convolution theorem? So we have seen in the previous video the theorem of convolution theorem. Now let's see how to solve this numerical. So I have prepared few steps for you all and we are going to follow those steps to find out the inverse Laplace transform of this given function by convolution theorem. So here on the screen there are steps. So step number one is consider given function as phi1 of s and phi2 of s. Now guys let me tell you that step number five is the convolution theorem which says that inverse Laplace transform of any two function of s which are multiplying each other is given by integration over 0 to t f1 of u f2 of t minus u du. Now guys here whenever function is given we have to identify phi1 of s and phi2 of s. So here in our case it is s square upon s square plus a square the whole square. So here I will say here phi1 of s is equal to s upon s square plus a square and phi 2 of s is s upon s square plus a square. Now guys here you have to remember one thing that whenever we will multiply these two functions that is phi 1 of s and phi 2 of s we should get this question again because what we are assuming is the function here for which we have to find out inverse Laplace transform is basically multiplication of two functions that is phi 1 of s and phi 2 of s. So if you see here that if I multiply these two functions I will get s into s s square and s plus s square plus a square into s square plus a square is s square plus a square the whole square. It means the multiplication of these two functions is giving me the question. So I am correct. Now let's go back to the step number two. So here in step number two it is said that we have to find out the inverse Laplace transform of phi1 of s which will be called as f1 of t and we have to find out the inverse Laplace transform of phi2 of s will be called as f2 of t. So let's find it out. So here I will say therefore inverse Laplace transform of phi1 of s is equal to inverse Laplace transform of this function. So now guys what is the inverse Laplace transform of s upon s square plus a square. I am sure that you are following my all the videos. So in the previous few videos I have covered the formula of inverse Laplace transform. So inverse Laplace transform of this function is given by cos at. Now I can call this as f1 of t because that is given in the steps. Now let's find out inverse Laplace transform of second function. Now it's the exactly same function. So we'll get the same answer and I'll, I'll call that value as f2 of t. So So guys here I got the value of f1 of t and f2 of t. Now let's move back and let's go through the step number 3. Now we are the step number 3 is we have to find out the value of f1 of u and for that we have to replace the t by u in f1 of t. So guys 
in the value of f1 of t i'll replace this t with u and will automatically get f1 of u so here i'll say therefore f1 of u is equal to replace t by u so here we will get cos of a u so this t will become u similarly in step number 4, we will find out f2 of t minus u by replacing t with t minus u in f2 of t. So in f2 of t, replace t with t minus u. This is f2 of t, I will replace this t with t minus u. So guys, I will get f2 of t minus u equal to cos of a into t minus u. And then, it is the last step that is the apply convolution theorem and in that substitute all the values so i'll put the values of phi 1 of s and phi 2 of s in the lhs and value of f1 of u and f2 of t minus u in rhs so these two values we got in step number three and four so let's apply the convolution theorem So here I have written the convolution theorem. I have substituted the value of phi 1 of s into phi 2 of s. Now let us put these two values. So f1 of u is cos a u and f, f2 of t minus u is cos of a into t minus. So I can say this as cos of a t minus a u. So we will get Now guys here we have to find out the integration of this term. So here there are two trigonometric terms which are multiplying each other. So 100% we have to use here the defactorization formula. So here I will be using a formula of cos a into cos b. So guys let me show you the formula because I am sure that most of the students don't know the formula of cos a into cos b. So I am gonna tell you the formula as well. So the formula for 2 times cos a into cos b. So this is a standard formula that most of the students do. So I am using the same structure and it is given by cos of a plus b plus cos of a minus b. So guys here in our integration here the value of a is a u and the value of b is a t minus a u but the 2 is missing. So what I can do is I can shift this 2 to the RHS and this RHS is my answer so that 2 will become 1 by 2. So in my answer I am going to get that half. So I will get integration 0 to t then half will be there. This will become cos of a plus b addition of this 2 term that is a u plus a t minus a u plus cos of now a minus b so a is a u. And we have to subtract this b. So if I subtract this term, then sign of this term will change. So a t will become negative a t and a u will become positive a u. So guys, this is the value into du. So now we have to find out the integration of this term. So half will come outside. Then I am keeping this integration over 0 to t as it is because we have to simplify the terms. Now a u and minus u cancel so we will get cos of a t. Next here plus this is a u plus a u 2 a u so we will get cos of 2 a u minus a t into d u. Now let us find out the integration of each term separately. So here I will apply the linearity property. We will find out the integration of first term and then the second term. Guys, so what is the integration of cos of a t? Now do not tell me that it is sin a t because guys we are integrating with respect to u. So it means u is the variable of integration and here in my function there is no u present so it is a and t both are constant so cos of a t will come outside and will get 1 and the integration of 1 with respect to u is u so we will get half in bracket cos of 
AT into U. Now, integration of the second term cos of 2AU minus 80 is sin of 2AU minus 80. Here I'll write down sin of 2AU minus 80 upon the derivative of this term with respect to u. So derivative of 2AU is 2A and the derivative of 80 is 0 and this is from 0 to t. Now let's put upper and lower limit and let's get the answer. So half as it is if I take this t here that will become t into cos of 80. So guys here I am solving for the upper limit. Next here 80 will come here that will become sine of 280 minus 80 that is sine 80. So plus sine of 80 upon 2a middle sign minus. Now let's put lower limit as 0. So 0 into this cos of 80 will be 0 and here we will get 0. So that will become sine of minus 80 and guys sine of minus 80 is minus sine of 80 upon 2a. Now this minus and minus will become plus and we will get half into t cos of 80. This is sine of 80 by 2a plus sine of 80 by 2a. So it is 2 times sine of 80 by 2a. 2 and 2 cancel. So we will get sine of 80 upon a. And guys, let me tell you that this is the inverse Laplace transform of the given function. So, here we got the inverse Laplace transform by using the convolution theorem and I'm sure that you understood how I followed this step. So guys, just follow these steps and you will get the answer by convolution theorem in the, uh, like in the simplest way I'll say. So, thank you very much. Keep watching the videos to learn about engineering mathematics. Thank you very much.